In our previous videos about pointers, we've always taken an existing variable and then create a pointer to that variable. However, that doesn't have to happen, especially when working with objects. So I want to create, in this instance, a pointer to an object that is created that is not in our lower memory space, but actually in an upper memory space where there's a lot more memory to work with and it's a pretty typical thing to do when working with an object. So I'm going to create a circle from our previous circle classes that we've used before. But I'm going to define it as a pointer. I'm just going to call it circle one. And say equals new circle. And I'm going to give it a value. Now you'll notice right away a couple of new things. First off, I'm using the new keyword. That's going to go call a constructor of my class and build that in memory at a location and return its pointer to my circle one variable. This still creates an object for us, but we're using a pointer to point to that object instead of putting that object directly into the memory where we access it. Now, you might think, uh, is there any other unique things? Well, let's say I have a no arg constructor. I'll create my pointer. And you'll notice that I can create a new circle with an open and closed parentheses, not passing anything into it. This is the most common way of creating a no R constructor in C++, and it's familiar to other languages like Java as well. So a lot of times if you've worked in one of those languages, this feels very familiar to you. However, as with if I was not using a pointer my objects, I don't have to use the parentheses as well. I just have to specify new circle. So both my circle two and circle three are creating no arg arguments to my constructor. But how do I use this? Well, let's take a look at an example. Here's a reference to some code of mine. Notice I'm using a pointer star and putting that in parentheses around circle one so I can use a dot operator to say get area. This is one method that I can use to do something like this. However, a more common method is to just reference the variable name, circle one, and then use the arrow, which is actually a dash and a greater than symbol to call my method name. When I run these, you'll notice that they provide the exact same result for me. They both show the area being exactly the same because it's referencing the same object. It's just different ways to reference and call that function. You'll find in most C++ programs that the second method is the one that's more commonly used with the arrow. It's a little bit easier to write because you don't have the star and you don't have the parentheses. You only have the two character arrow. That's why it's often used in C++ instead of the first method. And that's how you use pointers with objects and how you can reference its properties and methods very similar to how you would if you were using a regular variable.